China's great manpower is one of the reasons they've been able to stick it out. Another reason is that they make good soldiers. They proved it in North Burma, where they had American training and equipment. It's to our own material interest, therefore, to help equip this vast reservoir of Chinese manpower so that they can still make a major contribution toward the defeat of Japan. That was our mission before CBI was divided into two theaters, and it is still our mission. As you can figure for yourselves, it is not based on sentiment, but on the simple policy of placing guns in the hands of men in order that they may kill our common enemy. Well, the Japanese realized that we would help China, and surprising almost no one, they preferred to fight Chinese who had no guns. Since Shanghai and the Marco Polo Bridge they had discovered that it takes a lot of Jap troops to hold China down, even when the Chinese army was virtually without arms. Consequently, the Jap took the logical step of completely isolating China from outside aid. That was the Burma campaign of 1942. From their bases in Thailand and Malaya, they attacked at Mool Mine and Rangoon. They pushed up the Irrawaddy and Sitong Valleys. Outflanked the Chinese in the Shan states. Drove the British and remnants of the Chinese to India. That left all of Burma in Japanese hands. With what they could salvage of other Chinese troops, the Americans had gone to India too. India may not look good to you, but it looked awfully good to all these fellows who walked 150 miles over the Naga Hills to get there. The licking we took in Burma made our prospects of equipping the Chinese soldier and continuing the fight look pretty hopeless. But if we couldn't take the weapons to the men, perhaps we could take the men to the weapons. So during the summer of 1942, a handful of ATC planes operating without any of the modern direction-finding gadgets now plentiful in the theater, flew 13,000 Chinese from Kunming to Dinjan and Chabua. These troops were flown in transport planes at altitudes well above their service ceilings. Through the worst kind of monsoon weather, without rest or replacement for pilots and crews, to and from inadequate fields, over some of the worst terrain in the world, and the entire 13,000 were landed in India without a single casualty. Many experts believe that will go down in history as one of the great air accomplishments of this war. More troops were brought in later. A training center was set up in India, and the Chinese 38th and 22nd Divisions were reconstituted. So far, so good but it all remained a pretty minor effort. To augment it, we had to build up our Army Air Transport Command. We did. We doubled it and redoubled it. Then we established another ground force training school at the other end of the line in Kunming. our 10th and 14th Air Forces. This additional strength enables them to increase their protection of ATC operations. It also enables them to harass the Japs in all the various ways that Air Forces can think of. the strengthening of the 14th Air Force in China added substantially to the tonnage that had to be flown over the hump. 
and we began to approach the point beyond which the physical limitations of air transport made it unprofitable to go. That's where the next phase of our operations comes in, the reopening of a land route to China. The only way to do it was to push the Japs out of North Burma.